Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode of the Life of a Makeup Artist. We are here with our new friend, Miss Michelle Feeney, and our first ever fragrance guest. I am so Ooh. excited. How are you? I'm really well, thank you, and thanks for inviting me. And I didn't realize I was the first fragrance guest. So yes, that's, thank absolutely. You. I mean, I find it find it to be fitting. You know, we can't talk about beauty without talking about fragrance. No. And I myself, as a fragrance lover, um, I'm getting better at understanding and recognizing different notes. And of course, because of TikTok. And I think, you know, just the internet in general, we've all kind of be, become our own little fragrance experts and kind of that community has blown up. So yeah. I'm hoping so, because that was the whole idea, you know, why I stepped into what I'm doing, because mm -hmm. I felt that people need to understand fragrance and why right. they're buying it and why they're liking it, right. you know. Right. And it really, I suppose TikTok, the explosion of TikTok is really interesting because, you know, <clears throat> our strap line is who will you be today right. and because i come from a big you know beauty background right. and particularly color cosmetics um you know it's i think your fragrance should express who you are that day that right. moment you're wearing beautiful yellow you know hopefully you've got some <laughs> pop on but it's um it's about you know fragrance i always say is that you you match your lipstick right to your mood and to your, your outfit exactly and why not your fragrance right and there's great ones that. around not not just ours there's some great fragrances around you exactly know. so would you mind introducing yourself to our new friends okay well i'm michelle feeney and i am the founder and owner of floral street fragrances um, and i come off the back of about a f plus 30 years in the um, beauty industry uh, fashion and beauty, actually, because I started oh. in London in fashion show production in the 1980s. Oh wow! And I didn't know that. oh yeah, I'm 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 up there in age, but um, and then I, I moved mean, I moved to New York <laughs> and um, Bumble and Bumble, launched Creme de la Mer. Um, wow! And eventually seven years at Mac Cosmetics, which was really exciting. So yeah. So I've now poured all my experience into my own brand. Right, and I mean, like you mentioned, you've been so in in influential um, in building all these backstage programs. Mm. I did not know you also were so instrumental in Mac Senior Artist Program. Like, can you tell us more about your time at Mac? Yes, happily. It was an amazing time, mm -hmm. first of all. Um, I think the original founders of the brand, Frank and Frank, were from Toronto, mm -hmm. and they built this dynamic, inclusive, incredible, soul of a company right. um, and then as I was in Estee Lauder companies and we acquired Mac mm -hmm. um, and I felt really responsible to take that on board and, and grow the brand mm -hmm. with the other team members I was working with amazing team and um, so the senior artist program didn't it exist didn't before. exist at the wow. time so um, we talked you know we have a, a common friend in Gordon Espinay <laughs> but he was sort of hidden away in, in right. Toronto you know yeah. and um, and I felt there was so many talented artists and um, so I came up with this idea of senior artists and we put 12 together initially mm -hmm. and then <clears throat> I helped them become better at presenting. They're already brilliant makeup artists, right. but presenting in interview situations, mm -hmm. what to wear on TV. Right. And because of my fashion background, and um, Mac had already started reaching out with fashion, I developed a whole backstage program and we, we expanded the senior artists around the world. Wow. And working on, I was friends with Alexander McQueen, so mm. I'm like, can we bring our team? Right. And that's how it all began with the backstage outreach. And it gave, I think it, it gave Mac makeup artists this incredible professionalism mm -hmm. that they could take around the world. Right. And I think you're very young. I, I think Mac changed, um, it, it, it made becoming a makeup artist bona fide. Yes. Right? Like hairdressing was a big deal, right. but there was very, very few makeup artists in the early 90s. Right. Once you see that all black and oh. that face bead, you're yeah. like, oh, that's Ex a Mac person. Exactly. <laughs> and it also gave, um, what I learned from that, I've, I've actually pulled into my own brand as well, but it was about inclusivity before it was even a word. Right. You know, doing the right thing, mm -hmm. having all ages, all races, all sexes. Right. It gave a lot of jobs to a lot of people that otherwise might have felt a bit lost in life right um, and that's what I loved about it incredible people right 
Um, yeah. Everywhere you went in the world, I launched um, you know about forty countries in the seven years wow. with teams, and everywhere you went in the world, people go, "Oh, I love Mac." Right. And we found these wonderful, talented people in all those countries. Right. So it was a really dynamic time for that brand. Right. Well, as a former like Mac employee, and I'm sure this is like, super insightful for everyone that's mm. listening because we see all these programs come to life, but we don't know that the people that are behind them. Oh, that's like so lovely, that's yeah. so like amazing, and I'm. I mean, of course, we have all our favorites, Fatima, Romero Jennings, oh, yes. Tiffany, rest in peace to her. And, you mm. know, so many of our favorites we've seen and, we, you know, we just don't know how the programs come about. But I actually also want to talk about um, not only the MAC, you know, Senior Artist Program and all the other things mm. you've been instrumental in, but uh, the MAC AIDS Fund mm. um, recently spoke with Drew Elliott, Victor Fatima um, on the latest Keith Heron collection. Mm. Um, and, you know, to be part of something, you know, in its inception, and now it's over $500 million it has raised. Mm -hmm. Like, can you talk about how the beginnings of that program started? Because, you know, obviously it's still going on and I'm happy that that it is mm -hmm. because we don't see a lot of you know brands really like you know having something with such longevity no I mean it's very trendy isn't it now to yeah. have a cause yeah and I think I think like brands yeah one cent is yeah like, and brands have got to be really careful right now because mm -hmm. you know they're attaching themselves to things because they've been told you need to be with purpose but right it, this was really authentic you right. know the original founders <clears throat> had asked the mass, the Mac makeup artists that worked for them, mm -hmm. what should we do about this? And they came up with the idea of Viva Glam Lipstick and 100% of that going right. to, to memory and children with, living with HIV AIDS. Um, and RuPaul, of course, was the first right. spokes yeah. person, yeah. right? In that, but those leather, red leather boots and thigh high and, um, <clears throat> and that was so out there in the 90s to do right, that right to to to, to, to 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 the whole thing and i was, was there just any push back though there was in parts of america um they wouldn't put posters up because right, it was on the buses it was everywhere yeah but in parts of america it would it some of the stores in the you know wouldn't put those pictures up. and that happened again with um when i signed mary j blige and little kim Wow. They wouldn't put the pictures up for various different reasons. Um, so that McCade's fund made a real, it, it, it impacted people's lives. Mm -hmm. It was genuine. Um, and I uh, I just adopted it as, as a very much part of what I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, and we worked all around the world. Mm -hmm. So every single country I went to, mm -hmm. um, I would deal, when we launched China, we had to deal with um, you know, officials there because right. they didn't want to admit there was AIDS. Right. Um, in India, I took Linda Evangelista to launch mm -hmm. um, India and there was a big issue with um, prostitutes getting AIDS there mm -hmm. because it was, um, and, and we, we, we visited a brothel with her and right. we were really genuine about it all. Mm -hmm. And I think most people that work for MAC were there for various reasons, but that was one of them. Wow. You know, and to have beauty make a difference and a lipstick really genuinely be able to save a right. life. Right. Um, it's um, it's always stayed with me and every single brand I've done since then, I've tried to have this social impact in some right. way because that brand taught me that's what you should do. Right. With, and also the more you sold, the more y you could give away. Right. You know, which was wonderful. Right. So we, um, we not that the, the course wasn't, It'd be good if it was, right. if it would go away. Yeah, you know. And Mary J. I mean, she. We signed Mary J. Blige, and um, lots of people weren't signing her because she'd had a little bit of a past. Mm -hmm. And it was wonderful to be out with her, visiting um, different AIDS organisations, and um, and using her voice right. to her community at the yeah. time as well. Yeah. So that's yeah, amazing. Brilliant experience. Yeah. And. Um, uh, and 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 what was phenomenal was although Estee Lauder had acquired Mac, mm -hmm. um, they still ring true with the hundred percent of the of, right. of, of the sales. Right. So that's a lot. You've just mentioned the figure they've actually right. raised by right. now. That's a lot of money that could be profit. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, and what I love, though, is that um, they always included uh, the artists. You know, we had the option. Um, they would mm. tell us, like, if you want to 
go to the AIDS Fun Walk, like you can like mm -hmm. have the day or whatever mm -hmm. and kind of join, we'll figure out the schedule at the store. Mm -hmm. So it was nice because I, I do feel like these values, they carry on with you, you know, like like you said, you move on from, you know, to another company, but you still have these values and you're like, okay, I want to do something that mm -hmm. actually makes a difference. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> I do. Um, but, you know, if we go through your entire work history, listen, we'll be here for forever because you have so you're so well versed, you know, so knowledgeable mm -hmm. at what you do. Um, I kind of want to switch into a little bit of your fragrance um, mm -hmm. background because you are a Tommy Hill figure um, and kind of, you know, made that fragrance go viral. Well, viral wasn't really a word. Well, no, but then, it was, but, right? right? It was it, viral in real time, right, actually. Viral in real time. Well, yeah, I mean, again, it was. Was, um, I think what I've learned along the way, I've been involved with tremendous, you know, brands at their beginning, or and and Tommy Hilfiger fragrance had launched, and 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 I came in and then had to work with him and his team mm -hmm. to launch the fragrance globally, mm -hmm. which was very exciting. And what I learned from Tommy and his team at the time was that going viral and how that happened, right. because. He had to go into communities. Music was the really big in the 90s where you connected mm -hmm. with groups of people. Mm -hmm. And he was the one that embraced rap early. And, right. You know, and um, again, very exciting time. But also learning that fragrance and popular culture doesn't always translate into right. other countries at right. the same time or right. not at all. Right. So what, I, what I've loved about my life, my professional life, is working globally mm -hmm. and really getting to know other cultures and other people right. and brands don't always work in, in other right. things so Tommy Tommy himself is fantastic his team were phenomenal and it was a time at where I, I call it the Tommy Hilfiger effect where you do he was able to make things right. go viral right. you know without the internet right that's amazing so you've been at Estee you've been at you know Tommy you've been at so many companies doing, you know, a lot of things for them, but now you have Floral Street. I do. Can you tell us about the inception of the brand? Yeah, I mean, I um, I had the idea um, when I was in another role. I was CEO of um, uh, Pisa Cousins Beauty, and I had mm -hmm. four brands. Mm -hmm. And one of my brands was Sanctuary and Sanctuary Spa, and it mm -hmm. was on a, a road called Floral Street mm -hmm. in Covent Garden oh, in London wow. and I just literally one day looked up and thought that would be a great name for a fragrance brand and um, I registered it globally so if ever you have an idea for a brand of your own you know the most important thing is to check out the name see if anybody owns it and then if you really are serious about doing it you can register it for a category mm -hmm. so I registered it for fragrance and body and mm -hmm. everything in, in, in around the world and then I took a gap year at mm -hmm. 51, and I thought, do I really want to do this? Does the world need any more products? Right. And while I took that gap year, and I didn't really travel, because mm -hmm. I'd traveled most of my life, I just watched how things were changing, mm -hmm. and I thought sustainability isn't something that fragrance is embracing. Right. And look at all the packaging of the beauty industry in general. And if I'm going to do this, yeah. I want to do it really differently. Yeah. And it has to make a statement because right. I'd learned that from Mac. If you believe in something and you want mm -hmm. to change something, you, you you have to be have the guts to stand on that box and say, I'm going to do this differently. Right. And it's quite hard being a small, you know, being an independent when you've been in big brands with big budgets. Right. So I found Robert A, found the nose that's Jerome Epinet, mm -hmm. who is one of the best noses in the world. Oh, wow. Um, he's responsible for lots of wonderful fragrances and brands. And Robert A own uh, the, the most natural materials in the world, they grow them. So I can even trace where, you know, the vanilla is grown in Madagascar oh, wow. and the family that grew it. And, yeah. and I wanted it to be really true mm -hmm. to me being able to say, to the customer or the consumer or the fan, you know, I know where this comes from. Right. I know somebody's not being taken advantage of for this mm -hmm. ingredient. Right. And that the earth isn't going to be, you know, it's not going to be over harvested. Right. So we started with him. I put mood boards together of the look and feel, like I said to you, because of my experience with all the other brands I've worked with, but particularly actually Color Cosmetics and MAC, mm -hmm. you know, you realize your look is important, the way you feel, and also, fragrance can boost your Absolutely. feeling or Absolutely. your energy. You know, if I listen, I'm, this is what I did today. Yeah. I am wearing my 
sunflower pop. I was like, it's a rainy day. Let me match my fragrance to my, my makeup and my, my clothes to my fragrance. So if you haven't seen it, yeah. it's so cute. Oh, Go ahead, thank sorry. you. And that was the, that, that was the, the moment. But, you know, I, I realized that fragrance was being sold to people, like, you know, either with a celebrity face mm -hmm. or you're expected to pay a lot, a lot of money mm -hmm. for fragrance. Yeah. And and then people were sort of saying, I'm not going to use it because it costs so much. And I thought, look. Yeah. Only in special days. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I thought what MAC did was... It democratized really good product. Mm -hmm. It wasn't overly expensive. It's aquatic. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's it, so it, good. It, 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 it wasn't expensive, but, but and I don't mean the fragrance side of that, but the, but yeah. Yeah, the yeah, you yeah. know, the makeup, it was really good quality, mm -hmm. probably still is, mm -hmm. and it wasn't that expensive. Right. And I wanted to do that with fragrance. Right. So basically I took a lot of learnings mm -hmm and applied it to a fragrance band because I wanted it to be modern. Right. I didn't want a spokesperson or anything like that. It's really about you mm -hmm. and how you want to feel. Mm -hmm. And also London is so dynamic. So right. I kind of based it around London, it's dynamicism, it's diversity, mm -hmm. it's energy. And I wanted that to come across. So we launched with eight fragrances to begin with. Mm -hmm. And we've now got 11, and oh. we're in 22 countries in four years. Wow. And Congrats. people are loving, <laughs> loving, loving it. You know, and I'm, some days I wonder why I did this by myself. <laughs> um, and I wished I still had, you know, this huge, big team. Right. But, um, but I wanted to make a difference um, in my own way. And I think the pulp packaging, mm -hmm. um, four years ago, I couldn't get really many people to take notice. And now people right. are really taking notice. Right. So you mentioned um, sustainability and Floral mm -hmm. Street is clean and sustainable. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you more about, you know, some of the biggest pain points on, you know, how to keep that sustainability and mm -hmm. making sure that you're clean. And like, how do you overcome those, those pain points? Well, I think we started, you know, I started Floral Street with that in mind from mm -hmm. the beginning. So like I said to you, you know, a lot of people don't realize that ingredients in fragrance some of those could be extinct you know right. there's over harvesting right of certain ingredients so i wanted to make sure that all the ingredients in there weren't um over harvested came mm -hmm. from a good place and that i could talk to you about those right and jerome and robert a right. give that then I work with partners, so the people that make the pulp box, we're do doing this thing now, which is amazing, is cup cycling. Mm -hmm. So all the cups from Starbucks and Costa and everything mm -hmm. are collected. They go up to the plant, the plastic's extruded and used for energy, oh, and wow. the paper is recycled. So our box, there's a coffee cup in every box. Oh, wow. So you get this waste to beauty, which right. is wonderful. Um, and sort of every, and glass is recyclable. Mm -hmm. and we're working and all the new home products that we've got now as well we're bringing out oh my god the candles i know oh my gosh um which one i use the um this this one the oh, yeah. in my in oh. my bedroom because oh. it goes with my decor there it's you go. so good <laughs> so it's, it's sort of senseaping yes, your yeah, life you know that's what you're doing yeah. you're senseaping your life you're using color you're using scent you and you have a new launch um you have what's the name of the new um I was just on, like, I making my, like, mental wish list last night. I forgot. I will, we'll, we'll put it in the show okay, notes. Okay, because yeah. we've, we've launched um, Liquidless Reads uh -huh. and Room Sprays, and then we will be doing some Van Gogh home products soon, so you'll be the Ooh, first to get them. Oh, my God. But, you know, a lot of makeup artists in um, L.A., uh -huh. in their trailers, are now using our products to Sensecape the yes. trailers and make yes. them smell nice as yeah. they're working so they with give people. a nice calm to the to the yeah. makeup area yeah and i you know we have a lot of makeup artist fans um now in britain and across the world um who are introducing their clients to to our products as well yeah. but also i think you you know when you're setting the scene to work yep. with a client yep it's really nice for it to smell good so yeah. so we're doing that right and then of course van gogh museum came to us I right mean, you are you are van gogh today <laughs> Um, Thank you. You know, but um, and said well, you're sustainable. We want to work with you. Right. And we were. I went to the museum and I could choose any painting. Right. 
and that's so amazing. Jerome, Jerome, did you record it? I know. Did you record? Yes, it? Yes, we okay, have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so exciting. Recorded. Okay. Um, and Jerome was inspired by the sunflower painting, as we mm -hmm. all are, and so that's when he made sunflower pop, and it is a really it's beautiful, beautiful, fabulous fragrance. Yeah. And I think the minute you put it on, you feel uplifted, happy. Yeah. Inspired. Literally, that's what I feel like. Because I was like, oh, it's so rainy. Like, I want a lift in my mood. Yeah. And now I feel that. Now, I actually want to talk about the word clean because I uh -huh. know that it is quite controversial in beauty. A lot of people wear clean, you know, and it's, it's overused and it's also a marketing gimmick. But I would love to know what your opinion is on how fragrance could actually um, make that word and, and make it true to action as, in, as opposed to just like something that they say. Because I, I, I find it very interesting. You, you mentioned about some things being over harvested. So what do you think fragrance, um, the fragrance industry can do? And I mean, I guess beauty in general can, can do to kind of really stand behind the word and not just talk. Okay, it's a complex, it's yes. a really, it's, it's an excellent question. It's a really complex one. I think the word clean is being used more about ingredients mm -hmm. than packaging. Mm -hmm. So it's more about what you t don't have in your right. fragrance that might be on a list that might have some effect mm -hmm. on the human body. Mm -hmm. And I, I think what's really good is Sephora, for instance, right. do a guide right. for the consumer right. and for, for and for us who's mm -hmm. supplier to say you have to not have these certain ingredients in your fragrance in order to, to be claimed qualified. Mm -hmm. So I think what we need is, you're quite right, I think manufacturers, I think retailers, the more they sort of come together if they can to help the consumer mm -hmm know what all the words mean, right. or mean but it's it's really what it means to you so clean really and i think in skincare as well it's really about some ingredients mm -hmm. that are purported that they could have some effect on your body right right but it doesn't mean you are sustainable mm -hmm. right right so exactly. this is the confusion because right. you know your packaging could be sustainable but your products could be not clean exactly your products could be clean and you so you have to really delve in mm -hmm. i would suggest if you're really really interested in this you really always need to check out the websites check out the products ask the questions mm -hmm. of the brands that right. you're using yeah i think honestly the beauty industry right now it's pretty shameful, the packaging. Mm -hmm. And the amount of launches that there are of, you know, more and more and more people doing brands, celebrities coming up with brands. Oh I don't God. know, I'm confused myself. Please stop. I know, exactly. <laughs> and I bet you get sent all these things, right? So. I mean, sometimes I say no. Yeah. 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 I mean, I it's it. just, it's a proliferation of, and, yeah. and yet on the one hand, brands are saying, we're sustainable and we're clean. And on the other, there's like launch after launch after launch. So right. I think as an industry, we have to go, do we really need this many launches? Right. Yeah. You know, do we really need this many products? Right. And I was hoping as the world slowed down slightly, you know, with COVID and things, that people would rethink all of this stuff. Right. But we seem to have kind of ramped back up. Yeah. And yet it's very difficult. If you're a commercial company, you need new nurse. Right. You need... You know, you, you, you want to make money. Yeah, you but I have think profit. I yeah. think color cosmetics right now, and you're a makeup artist. I don't know how you all, as professionals, keep up with the amount of stuff that comes out. You know? <laughs> That's actually a conversation we had recently because I just depotted, like, depotted my entire makeup kit and re redid everything. Mm -hmm. And it's like once you have a solid basic kit and you have everything mm -hmm. you need, you don't need really to add much stuff. And like. You might like something, you might add stuff here and there, but you really have a functioning makeup kit that you really don't need yeah. to be adding stuff every two seconds. No, yeah, exactly. So I'm hoping we all take a look at that really yeah. and um, and find new ways of creating newness. Right. And maybe as, you know, I know it's a word that's been bounded around with the metaverse, but maybe as, you know, we can be more creative in that world and right. have less product to mm -hmm. apply. So yeah. let's see. Let's see what happens. Yeah. But it's a work in progress. Yeah, I just think take care with what you want to use. Look into the company that as you know, the products are made by and, and their claims. Right. And try as hard as possible. And I do think, you know, retailers like Sephora are, are really trying to guide the consumer in a different way mm -hmm. in stores and online mm -hmm. and things. Yeah. Um, and they're genuine because 
it's their definition of clean. Exactly. But you have to live up to it, so you have to show certification. Yeah. And for me in Floral Street, we I don't expect me to just say things. Right. We've got certification right. from third party that yeah. says. You're not in Credo, right? No, we're not actually. Oh, okay. No, we're not. Yeah. We're not. We've um, we've kept it really. We're, we're with um, we're just with Sephora, Nordstrom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. And Anthropology as well, which is oh, a great nice. brand now. Oh. Yeah. That's awesome. So this might be a really hard question, I know, but my favorite, um, it's kind of a toss up between Sunflower Pop, Neon Rose and Electric Rubal. And I want to know, what are what's one of your favorites? I know that that's a hard question. And then also, how do you think, you know, someone can find their signature scent? So what's your favorite? Okay, I can. It's quite interesting. You like these, those three, because they're all quite light and and yeah. and, and happy. Yes. You, you're a very happy person, obviously. <laughs> you're from Trinidad, of course. You're happy. <laughs> you've you've had all that sunshine. Right. Um, I need some right now. Yeah. <laughs> and great food. Um, but I, at the moment, I'm wearing a lot of sunflower pop because mm -hmm. it is. It's 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 very uplifting and I'm right. wearing a lot of bright clothes right I it's feel timely for it's, the season yeah, I just want to be bright right yeah now. um but I feel very close to another fragrance called Arizona Bloom oh, wow. and cool. we launched that during lockdown and it was an inspiration about sort of um high altitude and I'd been walking in Chile in mm -hmm. the Atacama Desert and which wow. is the driest desert in the mm -hmm. world and that high altitude bright blue sunshine mm -hmm. and it's it makes you feel very free spirited when mm. you wear it, mm -hmm. and and that's another popular one for me at the moment. And then in the evenings, I'm a black lotus. I'm a Ooh. rock chick. I love you okay. know. I love <laughs> I love wearing that deeper, darker fragrance. Right. Um, and I don't I don't think you need a, a signature scent anymore because you should be experimenting and matching. And like we do with lipstick, like we do with our hair. Right. You know why not right. have more than one fragrance and we i know you talked about the little discovery set but really that's what i wanted people to be able to test without right. investing right right so you test what you like and i call it the eight day challenge so you you wear a new fragrance from the set every day mm -hmm. and you see how you feel right and you see how others react right because we get lots of people tell us I was in the line and somebody said, what are you wearing? Right, this awesome. Yeah, where did you get that from? <laughs> and I think that has this huge effect on your, you know, your self-esteem, right. your happiness factor. Yeah, I absolutely love that. So there's always like a um, debate on how to apply fragrance mm -hmm. and you know, the way that, you know, all, you know, everybody does it. To do that, yeah. right? And then you like mm -hmm. do that, but you know, what is the actual correct way that you should be applying your fragrance? Well, I don't think there's a, a right and a wrong, mm -hmm. really, but we're, we're sort of advised not to rub your wrists together right. because you sort of bruise the top notes mm -hmm. and then that changes it. Mm -hmm. So it's best to spritz it and walk, you know, walk yourself through it, mm -hmm. waft it. I like putting it actually on scarves and clothing as well. Right. Do you avoid putting it on your skin and more on your clothes? No, only? no, no. Mm -hmm. No, I do both, actually. Okay. Um, but I, I, I do it on pulse points, so mm -hmm. you can put, you know, behind your knee. Oh, wow. Um, that's another pulse point, so you're, you, that's where you're going to be emitting a bit of heat. Right. Um, but, and also, I know there's, there's a lot of brands do hair fragrance, but you can spray your own fragrance in your hair, you know, I mean, it's, right. not, it's not if you want to do that. Yeah. So, I never uh, thought about that. But I normally, before I'm going out in, in but the But it sp should be a clean brand, though. Yeah. You don't want to spray out a bunch of stuff in your hair. Well, no, it's okay. I mean, it is alcohol in yeah. there. It might be Not dry, alcohol, sorry. Dry. Like, yeah. But, um, um, well, you know, who's to judge? If, if, yeah. if you've got a favorite fragrance. I want to put some in my hair. I know. <laughs> yes. Mine too, I'm going to do I mean, plus, this is not my hair anyway. So. <laughs> is it not? Oh, with the weaves? Um, yeah, it's... um. Full lot. Oh. Um, so I actually want to ask, because I know we, you briefly. Oh my God, you smell so good. Sorry. It smells good, right? <laughs> actually, it's so good. Okay, so I know that we didn't really get to talk about this, but you took um, a sabbatical yeah. for a year. Yeah. And I feel like many of us, regardless of our industry, sometimes we just want to put everything down and just step away and say, I'm taking a break. So I want to know like what, like what made you decide that you wanted to take that year off? And how was that experience for you? Okay, that's a great question. I um, look, I've worked 
basically from when I was about 15, mm. Saturday jobs. I went, I did go to, to uni, but I, I worked all through summer holidays. I worked all my life. Yeah. And I've got two kids. I had my son here. I was a single mom when I had... Was and you have a golden doodle, right? Oh, I do have a golden doodle, yeah. <laughs> yes. Who thinks he's a human? Yeah. Um, but I'd, I'd raised, you know, my kids. My, I had my daughter when I was 41. It was full-on life, full-on exciting right. life. And I got to... I, I stepped out of a huge job and mm -hmm. I just thought, I need to breathe. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of talk now about this kind of... 40, late 40s, early 50s of a female. Right. When you are going through menopause and, th and things are changing rapidly. Mm -hmm. And I just felt I wanted to step off mm -hmm. and, and really get to the core of who I was again. Right. And not be defined by what I did. Mm -hmm. um, and find out what I perhaps wanted to step into for the right. next. Now, I know most people maybe don't have the privilege to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we had enough finance between my husband and I for me to be able to do that mm -hmm. but I think you everyone should try and do that in a little way right occasionally right you know and even it was funny because I just I, I decided to sort of act like my young adult son and right. they'd come home sometimes and go what's for dinner and I'd be on the sofa going you know I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm, watch, I'm watching a box You set. tell me. Yeah, you exactly, tell me. Exactly. And it sort of, um, they were like, what's going on with mom? Right. But it just gave me some some breath. And I think we get very caught up in our yeah. industry or what we do. Right. And sometimes you're really not seeing what's going on. Right. It and becomes so your identity, it essentially. It does. And I wanted to take myself out of that. Right. And it recharged me, re-energized me. And for my sins, I then right. jumped in even deeper right. than I ever have in my life and did my own brand. But, right. you know, it's um, especially women, we have to listen to our gut and our heart. And, and you know, we, we manage a lot in our mm -hmm. lives always. Mm -hmm. And I think you, you having that ability to just step out a little bit. Right. You know, so it was a gift. It was a gift to myself. I didn't travel anywhere. Wow. Because I tr I just wanted to go inward. Be still. Yeah, be still. Yeah. Be still. So it's safe to say that this experience changed your trajectory. It did. Yeah. yeah. It did. And I'd never done that before. I'd always gone... I've never applied for a job in my life. It's always whatever I did, I did well. Mm. Somebody else offered me something. You know, it right. sort of had unraveled my life. Right. And, um, and I just wanted to pause. And I looked back a lot as well. Right. Because when you're running so fast, you're not always even Stopping. taking in that experience. Right. You know, my life had been so exciting. Right. And, and traveling and meeting and, tra you know, meeting wonderful people. And I also looked back mm -hmm. and, and reflected on wonderful times, on sad times. Right. Cried for myself in the right. past. Right. To go forward. Yeah. And it sort of... It clears you out for the next period of your life, I think. Oh, I love that. I love that. So what do you do now, um, you know, when you want to take a break? And, you you know, you're obviously not taking a sabbatical right now. So what are the small ways that you take time out to be, go inward? Um, I do yoga every day. Oh, yes. I know yoga. it sounds a bit, yes. No, um, I love yoga. <laughs> I, do, I do it every day. It's, it's my saviour. And even if you can't quiet your mind fully, which I never can, but mm -hmm. um, it gives you a little breath. Yeah. Um, I love, um, we've got, we're lucky in, in, in London, we have a huge garden and mm -hmm. we've also got a country house. So mm -hmm. I love being in nature, really being in nature. Right. Um, and cooking and reading. Very simple things, right. really. Right. But just you know taking time out to breathe and not be on the bloody phone right i wished i could throw that <laughs> phone out the window because all of our lives is in right. that phone yeah. everything yeah i relate yeah. heavily <laughs> oh my gosh you are such a gem thank you so much for making the time please tell our your new friends how to connect with you i mean i know we want to throw our phones away but we're going to connect first and then we'll, we'll put it down but well, how would it, how we should we connect with you i mean obviously the brand and yeah yeah well you can, you can just look up floral streets mm -hmm. Um, and, and I'm Michelle at Floor Street if you want to email me. Okay. I know I'd love to say hi to all those people you mentioned before, Fatima and everybody oh and God, Romero so and all, all the old gang. Um, and um, yeah, 
get, get in touch, visit our website, um, email me directly, follow us on Instagram, all the usual things. Yes. Um, and, you know, experiment with, with fragrance in your life right. and, and have fun with it. It, yeah. shouldn't, it shouldn't cost the earth in money or the earth in, in, right. in, in, in packaging. And, um, and I think it's a real, it's a time when we're really going to be sensecaping our lives right. as we go forward now. Right. Thank you so much. I just, Thank you. this is amazing. Like you are such, you are a true embodiment of, you know, you really craft your life. You know, you've spent so many times at different companies and you took your time out. You said, this is what I want to do. And you're living in it fully. Like I can, like I can feel it off of you. So I appreciate you coming and I'm so happy that you're in New York so we can make the time oh, to do this. No, thank you. Thank of you for course, having me. It's a joy. Of course, absolutely. So we'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you so much. Don't forget to follow us at The Life of a Makeup Artist and subscribe. I'll see you guys. Bye.